I want to welcome all of you uh, today for joining us on this beautiful Sunday in June. And I wanted to take a moment to just really let you know that I think about all of you. I, I keep you all in prayer of just uh, our church family, community, and all of those um, that are unable to worship together. You know, it's really been hard. And uh, over these last several months, I know I've noticed it and felt it. I'm sure you have too. Just not being able to catch up, to see one another. You know, even if it's just a small conversation you may have had um, after a worship service or during the week with someone, it just made that difference. So without that, um, it certainly has um, left a hole in things. But I say all that to say we're getting very close um, to worshiping again and being able to gather here in the church. Um, earlier this week, the governor um, did make a new directive and lift um, some reg regulations. And what he has done for worship services, he has allowed um, worship services indoors to um, have a maximum of 25% capacity of the building up to 50 people. Um, so for argument's sake, if your sanctuary holds 200 people, you can have 50. And we think we're probably around that number. And we are working on the plan um, with the board for reopening safety, something that re is required by our bishop in the conference. And we've been fine tuning that. We hope to really get that squared away very soon. And it's going to, you know, really lead the way on how we can worship together safely. But uh, we'll give you uh, updates, of course, when we um, do open up. We don't have a date at right now set, uh, you know, optimistically. I'm hoping by mid-July we can get together and, and figure something out to, uh, to worship in that way. But until that time, I again say, as I do every week now, I'm thankful for technology that we can worship the way we do, like this, and still... Um, maybe not be together physically, but we are still together relationally and, uh, you know, worship God and hear his word together. And just as a reminder, our June mission focus is the Cornerstone Women's Resource Center. So throughout June, um, if you want to support them, you can, uh, as you've been doing, uh, send in your donations through the mail. And in these times, let us be good witnesses. Um, let us share um, our faith. Let us share our hope. And of course, let us share our worship services with those around us. If you would, bow with me in an opening word of prayer, please. Eternal God, thank you for this day that we can gather together, however and wherever we are. But Lord, you are with us. You lead and you guide us. Allow us to truly worship you. Um, allow us to um, just know that you guide our lives and that you lead us. And let us help share our faith with others. But in this day and in this time, Lord, we just ask for your presence among us to allow us to recognize that. Um, just allow us to worship and feel the presence of your spirit upon all of us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And as always, to start us off, I'm uh, happy to introduce our very own Ron Batorf, who uh, picks out a special song for us. And for this Sunday, he has picked out um, a very special song, and it's called What a Friend we have in Jesus. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ron.
John, I want to once again thank you for opening up our service today with that special song. And um, this is kind of a strange piece for me because I have no audience here, but I wanted to take a poll today. And I usually like seeing you know, by a showing of hands. Um, so you'll have to do it at home, and I'll just imagine um, what my poll may show. But I wanted to ask you out there, is, does anyone like being around someone um, that boasts, um, you know, brags? I'm the best this, or the greatest at that, or I've got this perfect hair. Uh, maybe boasting about our grandkids is okay, but I think even at that, um, people start to get tired as you scroll through the picture after picture on your phone. But I'm sure, um, if you're like me or most, you never want to be around someone too long that does nothing but continue to boast in themselves of their own um, worth and what they do and accomplishments. It certainly gets old after a while. And if you're like me, um, you're looking for an extra strategy. Uh, you're trying to find a way out. And maybe you have a good wing person over there to help pull you away or uh, give you a dial on your phone so you can uh, get out of that situation. And I say all that in this whole idea of boasting because the Apostle Paul has something to say about boasting. Um, in our passage today, and uh, we're going to read out of Romans 5, uh, 1 uh, through 8. So if you have your Bibles handy, you can kind of start opening up to that. We'll read it in a minute. But in Romans 5, Paul talks about boasting. And it's wrapped around his teaching um, about what it means to believe in Jesus. Yes, of course, we find salvation. We believe in Jesus, and those who believe are saved. And we see Paul's teaching about salvation and the sense of believing in Jesus in many places throughout his letters. But I'm focused um, on Romans 5. And I want to highlight what Paul says believing in Jesus means. Um, and not only in the sense of salvation, but what does believing in Jesus mean to us and to our lives, um, to our Christian witness, um, to how we just present ourselves um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's look at that. Let's uh, read. If you have your Bible handy, I'm going to start um, in chapter 5, read at the first verse. And here's what Paul says in Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For why, while, we still, while we're still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly, Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of God for the people of God this day. And if you would, bow with me in a word of prayer. Almighty God, thank you for your word. We thank you for all that it teaches. We ask that you open our hearts, open our minds, and just allow us to learn what you would have us learn this day. And Lord, I ask that all that is said and all that is done is in glory and honor to you, and that these words are truly yours and they are not my own. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. So I'll start with the opening verses. In um, the first two verses, Paul uh, plainly states how believing in Jesus saves and how our belief should inspire us to live confidently or, or confident living. Why? Because Paul says we are justified um, by our faith. We are justified. And when we are justified, he said, we have peace. But peace with God, all of this comes to us through Jesus. It allows us to live in this sense of peace with God through Jesus. And I want to let that word peace just sink in. And let's just sit on it for a minute today. You know, last week and including this week, you know, we pray for peace within our nation, our country, our communities, and the world for that matter. 
And Paul here says that through Jesus Christ and how we are um, justified through our faith and that we are, have peace with God through that. And when I think about being in, you know, having that peace of God and being at peace with God, you know, what is our response to the world and those around us? Well, it starts with peace with God through, through Jesus and our relationship with Jesus and how we are justified through Christ and are at peace with God, let us then live that out. And I think that is a very first and good step in us uh, being peacemakers, if you will, or at least um, showing by how we live in this sense um, of extending God's love and peace that we have felt. And it says that you know, we are granted access um, by being justified through faith to experience God's grace. And then here's where Paul starts with the boasting. And he says um, in verse 2 that we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Boast in hope of sharing um, the glory of God. You know, just as we've never sinned, we are justified or, or, or you know, made um, righteous through Christ. And we boast in that hope of this glory um, of God. You know, Paul was always clear to state about boasting, and it was never about uh, himself or ourselves, but it was always about God and to boast in the hope that we have and we can stand in God's glory through Christ, that hope through Jesus, to be justified and stand and be at peace with God. But not because of us or boast in what we do, but boast in that hope. You see, Paul was always kind of looked down upon because of um, his small stature. He didn't really even speak well. If you study Paul and you see this, and um, those that were around him, and I think of uh, Corinth and the, the, the church at Corinth and the town, when it was very wealthy and many prominent people, and they had these great speakers or orators who would come in and, and talk and they were eloquent, and they were the kind of words you hear these people say as they describe them. And Paul was almost the exact opposite. And they made fun of Paul, and they looked down at him, like, look at this person trying to speak, and not even compared to these others. But see, in Paul, he saw that his weakness in that, it was God's strength that powered him. And that the things that were accomplished for God through him we're clearly all of God because of um, these physical limitations that he had. And he was clear to point that out and say, nope, don't boast in the person or in me or my own doings, but boast in God and boast in God's strength. Uh, Paul agreed with those that told him how he couldn't speak or how he looked. But he said, um, that is exactly where you see Christ and God's strength in him. So yes, believing in Jesus, it saves. We are justified, and we boast in that hope. Next I want to uh, highlight is that believing in Jesus doesn't make us immune to sufferings. And we see that as we pick it up in verse 3. Uh, believing in Jesus does not immune us to any sufferings. You know, that's always kind of a tough sell, if you will, or it's hard to communicate sometimes. And even for our own lives, we think, you know, if we go through some trials in, in, in hard times that, you know, is there really, is God really there or does God care? We hear these things from others or um, sometimes we hear things like, how or why would God let something happen? Whether it be within our own lives or someone else's lives or something that we see. And, you know, how could God uh, do this? Sometimes, as in Paul's day and even in our day, some people think that if they have certain sufferings that God's displeased with them and that it's almost a cause and effect. You know, that was very similar here um, as we think about in the first um, century church. But Paul says, no, um, clearly we're not immune to suffering. <laughs> but Paul says, let us boast in that suffering. Boast in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance. So when Paul says to boast in our sufferings, 
He's not trying to say that it's something uh, we should be maybe, in a sense, proud or a badge of that, you know, I, I suffer and I, and I go through these things, so, you know, look at me. But Paul is clear to say that through our sufferings, um, we can live our faith, and that faith will enable us to see past or beyond our sufferings, living in that hope, if you we, we talked about just a few minutes ago. And in those sufferings, to see past and beyond that and live our faith. And then, I can say that because Paul then lists kind of a chain-linked reaction of these special virtues about boasting in our suffering. And I stopped reading where he said, boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces, and then he goes into the list. Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And he says, hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit and it has been given to us. We see this list of this suffering that we uh, go through. It just produces a sense of endurance and this sense of character. And then that word hope again. Whereas Paul initially said to boast in our hope and we see this hope comes as a result of this character that's built through these sufferings. And then that hope culminates in God's love. And I read that in verse 5 when it is God's love that comes to us in. It's in through the Holy Spirit. You know, so in our suffering, we can live in hope. In the hope of God's strength. In the hope of God's promise. And in the hope of God um, being with us, if you will. Let us boast in that hope. And you know, we see that throughout Scripture. If, you know, from... Um, many different people and the way they lived their lives. I think of the Israelites crossing um, the wilderness and a long journey to this hope of the promised land. Many years, trials and tribulations, times when maybe they fell away from God, but God was always there for them, continued to love them as he fed them and guided them, um, holding on to this hope of this promised land that God said, I will give to you. And then as we read not long ago, as Joshua finally took the Israelites into this land that God had promised, um, this hope realized. Um, but in the midst of all that transpired of their own sufferings and trials that they went through, it's evidenced in Paul's lives. And um, with his friends and with his colleagues, we think of all they went through. And I mean, Paul, the hardships, the beatings, the jailings, the shipwrecks, just name it. But in all of that, staying focused on the hope, as Paul says here, um, the hope of God's promises. It's something we can hold on to. And Paul says, boast in that. Boast in that um, suffering to produce hope. Then, in verses 6 to 8, um, believing in Jesus, Paul says, we are saved in spite of our sin. Believing in Jesus, we are saved in spite of our sin. And I want to read verse 8. Um, completely, and just let that um, sink in for a minute. But God proved his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. God proved his love as we were still sinners um, that he died for us. You know, I always like considering that with the previous verse when I read that when um, it said that um, Rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. But here we see Christ dying for sinners. So believing in Jesus, um, we are saved in spite of our sin. You know, Christ died for us in our sinfulness to reconcile us, as we read earlier, to be justified to God. I mean, really, verse 8 sums up this uh, sense of this God's amazing grace that we find in Jesus Christ. It's um, important to remember when we read that, that we're not loved um, because of who we are, what we've done, um, what we do. You know, I'm fully aware that can be a hard sell at times in today's culture of celebrity, of status, of achievement, um, you, know, of, of, you know, what we've done or I've done. But that's not the case. Um, Christ died for all in their sinfulness. See, perspective matters in everything. I mean, God loves us because of who God is, our creator and our maker, not because of who we are. 
Um, verse 8 is clear. God proved that sense of unconditional love regardless of our behavior. We just need to accept that gift of God that he has freely given us. Um, believing in Jesus, um, we know that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Um, sometimes that's a hard thing to, to even let sink in, if you will. So I wanted to end with a corny story. <laughs> well, I know there's a lot of you out there that are corny, so you'll probably like it. But I think um, it brings a little levity to this, but it also proves a point I've been trying to make through what Paul has written here. So, it goes like this. There was a person that stood at uh, the gates of heaven, and they were greeted. And as this person was greeted, the person was asked for the password. You see, I love that because of our age of technology, who doesn't have um, just a zillion passwords? And who can remember <laughs> their password, right? So, the person was asked um, the password. So after several failed attempts, this person just took a deep sigh, looked up, and said, well, I give up. And at that moment, the gates of heaven immediately flew open and welcomed this person inside. You see... <laughs> The moral of this corny story is once this person stopped trying to give up or once this person gave up trying and to figure it out and to use their own knowledge or strength or understanding for the gate to open, when that person finally gave up and said, oh, I give up, it was open. See, it's very similar um, for us. You know, we need a Savior. And Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And we give up by accepting Christ's sacrifice for us. You know, we need a Savior. And we've got one in Jesus. And it's through our faith. And I want to end with verse 11. That says this. We even boast. I wanted to end with boast again, right? We even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have now received reconciliation. Paul again, we boast in God through Jesus. Why? Because we have been reconciled. And we talked about that also a while back, reconciled and being righteous and basically being put in right relationship through Christ. That is what Paul says to boast in. So, will you join me and will you join Paul in boasting in that hope and sharing your story? Amen. I want to move now to a time where we can uh, share uh, some prayer together, also uh, lift our highlights and blessings of our lives and, uh, you know, bring up front those things we need to pray for. And as always, feel free to email in uh, to the office or call any kind of prayer request, uh, those that may be in need of prayer. We also love hearing your joys and your blessings. So uh, send them to us also and we'll be sure to mention them and lift them uh, during this time. Our recent prayer list was uh, once again sent out with the email um, on the link uh, for this service. So look it over. And remember to keep all of those in prayer. You know, we can't, you know, mention each one, but um, each one on there is, is on there for a reason, for prayer. So um, lift them in prayer and help us keep the list current and active. So if someone um, could be removed, uh, let us know. Or if we need to add someone, uh, we'll do that also. But let us lift this continue on joy and blessing that uh, Diana Federici and Jabez were married last Sunday. And as they can uh, start their life together, we'll hold that in prayer. But I know a joy and a blessing for the family and all involved. So uh, we lift that once again, um, you know, this week. And as we get closer uh, to gathering again, I lift that as a blessing. I really do see light at the end of the tunnel. And I see us heading in that direction. And it's a joy. And I'll make that a joy and also a prayer concern. And we keep it in prayer that we do it safely. 
um, and we, you know, come to solutions that really just, uh, you know, work the best. There's no perfect answer in any of this, but I think you all know that, but we're working through it to do um, the best that we can. I also want to uh, lift the joy and the blessings of your continued uh, financial support. Again, um, I have been just um, taken back by all um, the support that has been coming into the church, um, to the food pantry, and, it, and from the food pantry, it's just community-wide um, with donations, whether it be food or, or monetary, and of the volunteers that staff that and work tirelessly in there. Um, let us remember them, all that they do, and also pray for their safety as they serve others. Uh, Lucy Webb wanted us um, to lift uh, this day um, Annie Nesbitt, and that's her friend and neighbor. She's recovering from the virus, but she still has some lingering issues because of that. So let us remember um, Annie specifically um, in prayer during this time and all of her family. Uh, again, our prayer list, um, all of those lists on there, let us continue to pray for all of those. Um, I still think of those separated from loved ones, um, whether they be in hospitals or um, just f uh, living facilities or places where they are not allowing visitors. It's hard. It's tough on them. Um, so let us keep them in prayer, especially those that are sick. Continued financial crisis, we just see more and more of that. And, uh, you know, it's going to continue to just, um, you know, go on until we get things more opened and, and out. And there may be lasting effects of that, whether it be businesses um, that may not be able to reopen. But in all of it, let us be hopeful um, and let us just lift them in prayer. And uh, let us pray for the families that, um, you know, have maybe lost income, uh, unable to, you know, to provide uh, the way they could. And if there's those in need that um, we think of, let us know, and we'll lift them in prayer. But we can also do all that we can to support them um, with what we have also. Um, so be sure to let us know if you know anyone that's seriously in need in that way. And um, as we begin to reopen our churches, let us also be mindful that we do it safety and pray that um, God leads us um, how to do this very effectively and safely. Pray always as uh, all those in the front lines, uh, taking care of us, doctors, medical staff, um, those that, that clean the hospitals and support the hospitals, and um, all of the first responders that are out on the streets going to calls, and uh, ambulance drivers, EMTs, our firefighters, um, our police departments, all of those that are out there um, on the front lines, um, helping keep us safe and protecting us. And I want to um, begin again, uh, or not really begin, but I want to be committed um, to pray for peace together within our nation, um, you know, specifically with the incident um, of George uh, Floyd's murder and this call that uh, we have for change and for reform. And it's real. And let us be specific that that can happen. And, but let us pray that any violence does not distract from that message. It's an important message, and let us be mindful and pray that that is the message that is heard. And I also want to pray for the safety of all of those, um, of whatever position they are on, um, if it's uh, you know, protesting or those um, trying to, uh, you know, keep a semblance, um, whatever it be, let us just pray for the safety of everyone and let the voices be heard um, so that change can come about. And with that, let us go to a time of prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this day to worship. We thank you for this time to give us to have prayer, to lift all that uh, is before you this day. And we know many things were not mentioned. And just let us take a moment and silently lift our concerns to you. Lord, we know you've heard our voices. You've heard each one and. You know each situation intimately, and we just pray that you provide all that is needed. Whether it is bringing the knowledge of your presence to someone, uh, your loving touch, uh, peace, or comfort. Whatever it may be, Lord, we pray that um, those in need feel your spirit upon them. We thank you for the many blessings of our lives and the joys that we can celebrate in the sunshine that is outside and the longer days of light. Lord, we thank you for all of that. We pray specifically for um, all of those that um, are not able to have visitors that are in facilities and they are alone and those that are sick during this time. Lord, allow them to feel your presence in your spirit. We pray for all that are taking care of them in these facilities and we pray for their safety. We pray for um, our doctors and our nurses and 
those working on a vaccine to give them wisdom um, that we get this as soon as possible and that it is safe and that it works. We pray for that, Lord. We do pray um, for peace within our nation. We pray for the family of George Floyd and all those who are affected by his death. Lord, bring a sense of your peace and comfort to them. And in a time of demonstration and protest, Lord, we pray for peace again. And we pray for a message that is given to be heard and not be the violence, but be the message of change and reform. We look to you for that guidance and for that leadership. And let us do our part by showing that sense of love and peace. Lord, we begin to reopen things, uh, communities and businesses, and specifically our churches. Lord, we pray for uh, your guidance and for your wisdom upon us. We pray for all of our leaders of this nation, of this world, of our communities, and within our churches. Lead and guide us all, Lord. We thank you for our military. They keep us safe and they protect us and they allow us to worship freely. Many times they are in harm's way and we ask for you, Lord, to be with them and with their families as they are separated from one another. But allow them to feel that your spirit is upon them and your protection is over them. And in all this, Lord, we thank you for Jesus who said, I have come to give life and give it abundantly and let us feel his spirit upon us. And then let us pray how Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we close our service out, uh, Paul Kranz uh, also has a special song for us. And uh, it, again, one very fitting for our message of this day and just for this message of, of peace and hope um, that we have together. With that, I'll let Paul introduce it for us. This is a hymn entitled, How Can I Keep From Singing? Uh, Robert Wadsworth Lowry um, wrote this, and I, I think one time I remember having a conversation with John Frankenberg. I think John likes this song. Um. on in endless song above earth's lamentation I hear the sweet though far off hymn that hails a new creation through all the tumult and the strife I hear the music ringing it finds an echo in my soul how can I keep from singing what though my joys and comforts die, the Lord my Savior liveth. What though the darkness gather round, songs in the night he giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that refuge clinging. Since Christ the Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? I lift my eyes, the cloud grows thin I see the blue above it And day by day this pathway smooth Since first I learned to love it The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart A fountain ever springing all things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing? All things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing?
Paul, I want to thank you for closing our service with that song. And uh, just remember, when we boast, let us boast in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Let us boast in the strength and the power of God that, support, that supports and that sustains us. And let us boast in the gospel. And let us share our story. Go forth this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.